Welcome to the show. Uh, this is Jerome. Uh, Jerome, let me get the surname right. Pena, Penafort. 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 Yes. I thought maybe there's a, like a Portuguese influence and it would be Pena Fort. Uh, but uh, if you like, we'll go with the old Penafort. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, Jerome, first, uh, fantastic. Thank you so much for letting us in. We were here uh, the first time the crew came early because it's like free chocolate for everyone. So everybody turned up on time and all my horrible crew here, each one has stolen stuff, eaten stuff. They're just completely stuffed. So I want to thank you for that in the beginning. So you don't get upset a little later. But let's start right at the top, which is the story of Jerome the man himself, who one day left his job. See, I've done lots of research here. Oh, don't worry. In real dangerous. estate, uh, with a seven-figure salary and equity, uh, houses all over Europe and uh, the West Indies. Bahamas, he has two hotels. He left all that and then suddenly did a U-turn and went back to what was a family business. Yeah. So all there is a dream. Uh, I but it'll happen. The dream. It'll happen. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, I was working in finance, uh, real estate finance for quite a number of years. Uh, about five, six years ago, I joined my family business uh, in chocolate manufacturing. Mm -hmm. uh, it was 100% Singaporean owned, but based on Malaysia. Uh, so I learned everything about chocolate. But more importantly, I got a chance to visit farms, farms around Asia. So I visited farms in Malaysia, Vietnam, Philippines, and it was just eye-opening. So, I, you know, you see the farmers growing the cacao, you see them Let me doing everything. Cacao, right? Because I, I want to get that right. People say that wrong all the time. Cacao, is that, is yes. Cacao is the right way to say it. Yeah, that's, that's the fruit. Yeah. That's where uh, yeah. chocolate comes from. After it's processed, it's called cocoa. So right. most people know It's like cocoa. you're a child, you're cacao, then you grow up to be a man and you're cocoa. I'm, yes. I'm explaining. Essentially. My, our audience is under seven. Okay. So we've got to listen. Okay. It's very simple. Yeah. Okay. I, I want to go back a little bit again because you mentioned yeah. that uh, you uh, went back to the family business, but you were very successful. Uh, uh, jokes about you were earning well. It's, uh, why would yeah. you let that go and then suddenly do a U turn? Why didn't you just go to the family business in the beginning? Uh, a variety of reasons. Uh, well, I wanted to work in the corporate world first. Oh. Uh, but my direct family got involved with the business uh, only about six, seven years ago. So right before I joined. But it's also a kind of, I've always had an entrepreneurial Street. side of me yeah. or, or just wanted to explore. You're the opposite of me. Okay. I want a government job, same salary and very little movement. So that's great to know. Yeah, yeah. we're all different. Mm. Uh, so yeah, so it was like good timing and uh, chocolates. You know, who can say no, right? Really? Like your whole crew. So nice to have a no, profession. Yeah. Exactly, the moment yeah. we say chocolate, everybody's interested. Yes. So I don't want to you know, be mean, but we've done lots of podcasts elsewhere outside Singapore. Yes. And Sometimes it's not an interesting profession, you know, like income tax return, filing and things like that. There are people yeah. involved in that. Yeah. <laughs> not pointing fingers. Yeah. So this is so nice. It just yeah. brightens up the room. You say chocolate, chocolate manufacturer, Mr. Bucket, chocolate theory. Everybody's interested. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so well, let's, go, let's go back to uh, the point you were making about the farms and all because I interrupted yes. with my stupid conversation about cacao and co cocoa. Yeah. Uh, so you went right, you basically went to the basics. Yes. So, I mean, before joining the business, maybe I, uh, we didn't really know this growing up, right? But most, I didn't even know that chocolate was, or cacao was grown right here in Asia. Mm -hmm. So going to the farms, it was just totally eye-opening. Then you experience the hospitality of the farmers. Uh, the moment you enter, they, without having a relationship, they really offer you fruits. Which is crazy, right? It's yeah. like, I just met you and I offer you yeah. something. Which we do, la, but that's different. Please, I'm <laughs> hoping to. I'm yeah. from India, for God's yeah. sake, I've got empty bags. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But, you know, so, so these farmers are not well to do, they're poor. So immediately, I remember the farm in the Philippines, they offered us pineapple, uh, freshly ripe uh, pineapple, and it was delicious. And, we, you know, we just chat and we talk about their struggles. We learn what they go through. And most of them haven't even tried chocolate, which is crazy. What? So, you know, that discovery that, you know, realizing there's such a lack of awareness. Uh, so they don't know what the end product is? They don't know. Wow. Most of them have not even this tried chocolate. This is great chocolate. business sense though. Yeah. You keep people in the dark. They have no idea how good this end product is and how much you know, business you're generating. Correct. Why? Let's cancel the podcast. I don't want this to go out. Because <laughs> you've got people who are you know, suffering in a sense and have no yeah. idea. Sorry. Yeah. Which, is, which is sad in mm. a way. Uh, but it's how the world has, that whole cocoa or cacao world has worked for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, but so where, this is where we came in and we're like, okay, that's 
educate people that right here, right here in Asia, right here in our neighborhood, there's great produce, great cacao that can be turned into great chocolate, which we do. Mm -hmm. And we want to share it with everyone that, you know, there's this uh, great farms in India, great farms in uh, Malaysia, all over. But did you actually get them to try a chocolate? I mean, if they've, uh, it would be fantastic. But uh, not the first trip, but yeah. subsequently, so What yes. was the reaction to chocolate for the, as an adult for the first time? They honestly were very surprised that it could taste that good. Yeah. Because, you know, when you, you know, they process the cacao, the beans and everything, uh, what you taste is usually quite bitter. Oh. Bitter, yeah. but flavorful, but bitter. So then how does it get sweet? Because of sugar? Sugar. And also the roasting You never told me sugar's in chocolate. Okay, <laughs> sorry, I'm kidding. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but, you know, it's, it's all that, that, uh, it makes it delicious and they were so happy. They're like, you know, it's the fruit of their labor, like in the final form. You know, uh, it's a simple, like, I'm just thinking when I had, my son was young, then we gave him chocolate for the first time. I do remember how the face, you know, brightens up and all. But yeah. nobody, I can't think of anyone who has a bad reaction unless you're allergic, of course. Yeah. But it's just nice. It puts a smile on your face immediately because the taste is like a communicating tool. Yes. It's, yeah. I mean, a lot of, everyone says we are the business of joy, but it's so true. Yeah. Because there's almost nothing unhappy about chocolate besides the industrial part of it. Right? Yeah. yeah. But, but which we didn't want to focus on and yeah. show you that side. Yeah. So don't ignore that. <laughs> but I'm just thinking we could solve world politics if we could give more chocolates to the areas where they were fighting and, you know, uh, unhappiness. Fully agree. Yeah. Fully agree. Just go there. The soldiers are fighting with each other or whatever, you know, the things are getting out of hand. We go with our chocolates and we start giving them and everybody drops their guns and says, mm, nice, peace, peace. Yeah. We've hit on something, Jerome. But yes, yeah, I'm yes, telling you so. seriously, we got, we'll take it offline and discuss it a little later. Yes, yes. Good yeah. business. There you go. Yeah. Okay, let's now first finish the entire process of chocolating and then we'll talk about this complete area that we're in, which is yes. like, it's unbelievable. It's like a school for chocolate. Yes. Which reminds me, I don't know if this research is correct, but you're a huge fan of uh, Willy Wonka and yes. the, uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory series. Yes, so that's exactly uh, where the name of the business, Mr. Bucket, yeah. came from. Yeah. So if you've read the uh, the book or you watch the show, I always pretend to uh, have read everything. So if people ask me this question, I, I'm, I don't even blink. I say immediately yes. Yeah. And then hopefully you won't you know push the matter and make me look stupid. So yeah. So what's this chapter two? Uh, I suppose <laughs> one before chapter three. <laughs> okay. That's how I remember it. So, <laughs> uh, so Charlie and a chocolate factory uh, basically is a story of uh, you know how it's a story about hope, yeah. right? Charlie the uh, the the main character who is who grew up very poor. He was one of the five kids that got the golden ticket. They entered into the, they managed to get into the chocolate factory because of the golden ticket. Mm -hmm. At the end of the story, because Charlie is the best, uh, best behaved, he is the kindest, Willy Wonka gives him the factory. So the story kind of ends there. Uh, there are a little bit of continuations here and there, but uh, what happens is, oh, for, I forgot to mention, Charlie's surname is Bucket. Right. Yeah. Is it pronounced Bucket or Bouquet? Bucket. <laughs> I don't know, the Europeans have different ways of saying things. Yeah. It's true. Charlie Bouquet. <laughs> bucket, is, bucket. bucket is easier. Oh, you're uh, the master, <laughs> I would argue. Oh. Uh, but so, at the end of the story, because Charlie's well behaved, he's the kindest and all that, uh, Willy Wonka gives him the factory. And Charlie, uh, but the story doesn't really continue after the book ends there. Right? Isn't there a second part? There is glass elevator, and there's, there's, there's all that, but nothing really talks about what happens. So, this Mr. Bucket here, Mr. Bucket Chocolatery is out. So this is what really happened. So this is what really happened. This is what we, this is breaking news here. Uh, this is our interpretation of how the story continues. Charlie is now grown up. He owns a modern chocolate factory in Singapore, in Asia. Wow. And everyone calls him Mr. Bucket. There you go. The way he said it, like I'm so, it's really the most stupid man in the room, which is true. <laughs> but you know, so I actually thought for a second you, you would be more Willy Wonka because you're the owner, you're the entrepreneur with the big business. But you're actually identifying with Charlie, yeah. who's this guy who loves chocolates. So, so if you look at our aesthetic, the, the way we have done our, our space, like Charlie's character is kind. So we use a lot of light tones. But Charlie's creative, he's, he's hopeful. So if you, the aesthetic is always, you know, a little bit more bright hearted, yeah. it's a good vibe, you feel happy when you come here, there's pops of color, which is what we, is Charlie's character and, and what we stand for. I can see clearly he's very passionate. Uh, that's for sure. Yeah, 100%. So that the child in you is very important. The child in you is still there. Yes. And the child in you is your business. 
because I, I suppose in a, in a way you're creating this ambience which yeah. allows people to, I don't know if it's the right thing to say, go back to your childhood or whatever, but there are happier memories generally yeah. with, with childhood and chocolates, etc. You've sure. got something there. Yeah. For sure, thank yeah. you. Yeah. yeah, very interesting. Uh, do the people who work here know all this? The history and the significance yeah. to you? Yes. Yeah? Yes, everyone knows. Uh, we just had a meeting on, on Monday. We have a kickoff meeting and we talked about the whole story. Every year we will do this refresher. So how does one get a job here in Mr. Bucket Chocolatery? Do we have to know our Rual Dal books and all that? Just be passionate, be happy and uh, yeah, pretty much that. You know, our part of the world is more like be desperate and that kind of thing. Things are different. Yeah. But I, I can see so many people I grew up with who would be so happy to work here. You have no idea. All right. Uh, tell us now a little bit about the process. We'll be doing that at some point as yeah, well. Yeah. But uh, what goes into… People just… We eat the chocolate at the end. But it's very scientific. It's yes. hugely complex. It's, it's a mixture of art and science. So uh, the art part is your taste buds, how you perceive it. The science part is the process. Uh, so all our cacao comes from the farms around Asia. We work directly with the farmers. Uh, so we work with farms in uh, Malaysia, Vietnam, Philippines, India, Thailand, all over. Uh, the cacao beans are already fermented and uh, processed. Uh, we get the cacao beans here, into the factory here. Uh, we turn it from the bean, we roast it. We Where's the factory? Here. Where this we is are. the factory. Well, this is the factory. So whatever, to be clear. whatever you eat here is actually made right here, this factory. Oh, wow. So one of our slogans is made fresh daily. Yeah. It's true. It's almost like eggs. <laughs> almost, but yeah. it's, it's like a coffee roastery, yeah. right? You, you go there, the coffee's in a raw, green beans, a raw form. They roast it and then you drink it almost immediately. Wow. Uh, after a few days. Same here, our chocolate is made fresh. Uh, it's a part of the reason why it tastes so good. Uh, but so after, just talking about the process, after we roast it, we remove the shell, what's inside is called cacao nips. Mm -hmm. The nips is… Can you eat that? Uh, you can. So that is actually the healthiest First edible and healthiest form of chocolate. Very important. Healthiest form of chocolate. The yes. cacao nips. Cacao nips. Yeah. You can actually eat the whole cacao bean. Yeah. Uh, but some people are worried about the husk has like, you know, uh, it's, it's not properly processed. But honestly, we actually have a cacao bean dredging that tastes awesome. Right, you got a cacao bean, I've got a has a... bean. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I was just thinking this word nips is scary. It's not a body part, right? No, no. Because... <laughs> N I B S, not uh, uh, nibs, not, yeah. nibs, nibs, nibs. All right. Not the one you're thinking about. Fair enough, fair yeah. Enough. yeah. Uh, so, so after that, uh, the nibs go into the, the melanja, which is a stone grinder. Actually, these stone grinders are used to make dosa. Dosa? Dosa, yes. What, what, what Indian uh, yeah, dosa? So all these melanjas, most of them actually. Can come. you give it back, Jerome? There are people starving <laughs> in India. You've taken our machines. We're coming dosas now. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty good. Dose. That would yeah. be technically correct, I yeah, think. Yeah, plural. So, yeah. I mean, I think in Singapore we call it dose, but yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but so, this stone grinders, melanges, we call it, uh, it's actually what's used to make the chocolate. Uh, for us, we, this is a more traditional method where we use the cacao, the cacao nibs go in, cocoa butter goes in for texture, and then sugar for a bit of sweetener. Uh, and then, yeah, after about 48 to 72 hours, Chocolate is ready. But it's also the proportion, right? I mean, you're mentioning yeah. all the ingredients. but So that's the size. So Abu that's our, you know, we have different percentages. You have a 72%, 66 and so forth. Hmm. Uh, that, that just, that's the cocoa content. So we, depending on how, so every single bean that we get from each origin, we will roast it different uh, temperatures, profiles, we call it. We will try different recipes and we will always look to optimize the flavor of their particular beans. It's a bit nerdy, it's a bit sciencey. No, no, but, but who's the, who's the taster? I'm just thinking that's the best job of all because you're going to always be running it across yeah. this taster guy or guy or girls yeah. or whatever. So that's the best job. We have a panel. Yeah. So we, uh, our head chef, myself, our head of marketing, uh, all of us will taste because we want different perspectives. Uh, everyone's taste buds are always biased. Yeah. Right? So we, we, we will have a panel, a tasting panel. So we all have the best jobs. Yeah, but is, it, is there a way to get the, uh, I'm coming to the point here, which is uh, get the chocolate the way you like it. And yeah. that's why you have this option of making your own chocolate, right? Yeah. Because I was just thinking, sometimes when you eat a chocolate, you're thinking maybe a little less sugar, maybe a little less, yeah. you know. So how will we be able to do that? Because apparently there's one thing we can do here is you can make your own chocolate. Yes. Amazing. So uh, talking about making our style, we actually offer, we all have, different preferences. So what we do, we offer a range. So different flavors, different percentages. But here at Mr. Bucket, we have this thing called the creation station. 
mm-hmm. uh, where you can actually make your own chocolate. Not from like the bean, but we, we actually help you incorporate different flavors into it. So you have everything. We have a milk chocolate option, which is actually an oat milk. So it's vegan. It's a vegan. Uh, Don't look chocolate. at me. <laughs> I'm quite happy with original chocolate and lots of milk. Yeah. So instead of uh, cow's milk, we use oat milk. So it's vegan, friendly. Um, but does the taste differ? Of course, but still delicious. You try it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there we have a single origin dark chocolate. Uh, so you choose between the two. Tell me the thing about dark chocolate because we have all these myths about dark chocolate. Everybody keeps telling me they have dark chocolate, it's less uh, sugar, less yep. dangerous for you know diabetes and these kind of things. Yeah. Is that actually correct? Because sometimes I wonder. I mean, what, what the issue with diabetes is actually sugar, right? Your insulin right. regulation, all that. So, of course, when you eat dark chocolate, the darker it is, the less sugar. Oh, yeah. okay. So, that's why that makes sense. What do you prefer? Darker chocolates or those dark. milky? Dark. But it uh, depends. depends on the day, uh, right? Yeah. But I've noticed that's like the more refined person seems to like the darker chocolates with the fancier names. Mm-hmm. And us children like our milk chocolate, you know, with this simple one-word name. Actually, you know, when we do our tasting, we let people try everything. Uh, everyone was like, oh, I want dark chocolate. Okay, so we let them try. At the end of the day, what they buy? Mm-hmm. What? Guess what? What? They, they, buy, they buy the milk chocolate. I, I, hand on heart, I can't believe that dark chocolate can compare to milk chocolate. You haven't tried out dark chocolate. That's I'm, not, I, I'm sure, I'm, I would argue the point, sir. You, I've seen the security outside. There's no <laughs> doubt about that. Yeah. Um, so the bean to bar, yes. which is your concept? Yes. Yeah, the, clarify what that is for everyone because it sounds fantastic. You've heard farm to table? Basically, ah. For us, we, the, our ingredients start from the cacao beads. So from the raw ingredient and we make it all the way. Our whole process, we roast it, we crack it, we know it, conch it in the melanger, the stone grinder. And that six to eight step process is the bean to bar process. So we make our chocolate from scratch. So bean to bar, from scratch. So here the sustainability kind of thingy it's, again, right? Yeah, so it's, it's a process. The bean to bar is, describes the process, but what it really is, it's that focus on the farmer, mm-hmm. the fact that we source directly from the farmer, we want to celebrate mm-hmm. the, the origin, mm-hmm. we want to celebrate the flavours of uh, that particular location. Okay, so, so it's not yeah. what my producer Silvery told me, which is that bean to bar is what you ask someone in Singapore if they're looking drunk. Have you been to bar? And you know, then they answer, Silvery, you're wrong, so don't open your mouth when adults are talking again, please, thank you. Sorry about okay. that. Yeah, but this is a big thing in Singapore which we've picked up and which almost every podcast we've done or will be doing talks about this whole thing. Let's use the farm to table metaphor yes, there again. Yes. But it's very important to organically distribute everything from the earth till the person actually consumes whatever the product is. Yes, so important. Like, I mean, we all need to know where our food's coming from, right? Uh, a lot of the processed stuff, a lot of the frozen stuff, you really don't know where it's from. Mm-hmm. Uh, but for us, we want to show you where the chocolate comes from. We want to show you the people behind it, the farmers. Uh, and here, I think one unique thing about our concept is everything's for show. We have everything's glass. You've seen. Yeah. You can see. Well, our, that's our also Charlie in the chocolate factory, no? From what I remember. Uh, not really. Actually, their, their factory is actually this closed huge, off. This huge. But only the five kids got to go in. Right? Oh right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but for us, it's we want to open. We are open concept. Because yeah. we have nothing to hide. We want to show you how it's made. We want you to learn how it's made. We want you to appreciate how it's made. I appreciate it, Jerome. It's called accountability. We need that in life. People are not accountable. You're very accountable. You come here and everything is the way it is. You can see it's transparent from start to finish. Yeah. And you, you know can... why? Why? Because, because I used to be an accountant. <laughs> <laughs> now Jerome's doing the jokes. I'll make the chocolate. <laughs> Enough of this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah. fair. Yeah. Okay. Let, let's turn our head. Uh, as we enter the area, this Damon, uh, Dempsey Hill Dempsey, area, yeah. seems to be like a chocolate baking uh, haven. So, our unit, yes. Uh, there are uh, lots of, there are other bakeries. There are actually a lot of really good restaurants around here. Mm-hmm. Uh, both local and international cuisine. Uh, but Dempsey Hill is very central, very near to Orchard Road, right? Everyone knows Orchard Road. Uh, great location. For shopping. Oh. For shopping, yes. Uh, great location, but you know, we are here, you have free parking. Uh, free parking? Yes. <laughs> I mean, I come from the city of Mumbai, there's no parking. Parking is extinct. Yep. We just look at cars and wave and all that because there's no place to park. Yeah. Singapore doesn't have that problem. That's not as bad. Getting there. <laughs> uh, Guarded answer. Yeah. Free parking and it's just really convenient to drive up here. And it's amazing. It suddenly opens up into this, uh, uh, you know, there's lots of space for everyone. You just feel like you're in a yes. hill station. 
Yes. Yeah, we just escaped beautiful the greenery. Beautiful greenery, absolutely. Uh, and all these buildings are really old, actually. They are all they all used to be barracks or you know oh. they are all colonial buildings. Oh. Yeah, heritage okay. buildings. Yeah. So what are the plans now in the future? Because you've got this experience thing going as well, which I think will grow very fast when people yeah. come and participate in the process making, etc. Uh, are there other plans? Are you going to have more of these branches, franchises? So our plan, our overall goal is to position position Asian chocolate as the best in the world. So for us, who, who is supposed to be the best? If you don't mind me asking, there is Swiss. I mean, right now, I think if you if you ask anyone where the best chocolate comes from, everyone would say some part of Europe, probably, right? Yeah. Probably. But whoever said that Asian chocolate is not good, right? So for us, it's about education, which is why we're open concept. We do a lot of workshops, activities. Mm. We want to educate that it's not about where you're from; it's about but, what it is. But Jerome, I thought that back in the day, it was all South America which had the best uh, cacao, cocoa. It's where it started. Yeah. Uh, there's, but you see all around the world, it's like, you know, for instance, you have wine around in France, uh, all mm. over. But for cacao, same thing. It's grown different places. Doesn't mean it's better or worse. It's just a question of, it's like, we all grew up in different places. We all have different character mm. because of our environment. Same thing for chocolate. So what you're saying is Asian produces second to none. And people yes. just don't know about that. Yes. So we've got stereotype information growing up and that's not the only place where you can get chocolate from. Yeah. We can get it. You mentioned India as well, India farms. Yeah, yes. I don't always like Indian chocolate uh, in terms of taste. You should try ours. Really, it's yeah. sometimes. So, so actually, you've got stuff made in India. We have cacao beans from India. Wow, I'll take them back because that's smuggling. I got to. <laughs> I got to tell you honestly, we are we're very strict about that. I'll be taking it back. Huh? Okay. Yeah. 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 So, uh, so you're asking what's next uh, for us in order for us to position Asian chocolate as best in the world? We have to uh, have more places where we can, uh, more chances to talk about chocolate, sell the chocolate. So we will look, be looking at probably some form of expansion. It's like, it's, you got to, more you, shops. You got to re-educate yeah. us because nobody knows that the Asian side of it, the, the producer is as good and from well, the start to the finish, yes. it can be pure, uh, you know, Asian product. Which is what we're doing, which is why we're here, which is why we exist and which is why we do things differently. Uh, we want you to have fun. Mm. At the end of the day, it's about great chocolate and great chocolate should be delicious and it should be fun. Which is why we do kind of interesting flavors like pepper. We do, uh, we, we allow you to make your own chocolate, it's hands-on. A couple of things I don't like is the, the, the new concept of chicken chocolate. I, I don't know. Oh. The people, you know, I don't like pop, popcorn and chocolate, to be honest, but I know lots of people really love that. Yeah. I'm, I'm not asking you to decide here because the, everybody's, you got different tastes, so we can't ever get, you know, agree on that. Yeah. But I want to ask you one thing. Yes. White chocolate, yes. why does it taste a little like, well, it's just not the same as the rest. So actually, white chocolate, so with the cacao nib, uh, industrial process, what they do is they take the nib, they press it, and they, it becomes two things, cocoa butter and uh, cocoa powder. So that dark color that you see in chocolate actually comes from uh, cocoa powder. Right. Cocoa butter is like a butter, it's like oil. Right. So white chocolate has no cocoa powder, that's why it's white. So without the powder, the taste is different? It tastes a lot sweeter, a lot milkier. You don't really taste the cocoa. Mm. You taste more of the sugar in the milk. Oh, pretty much. damn it. <laughs> All right. But do you think one day, and please be honest about this answer, do you think one day white chocolate and dark chocolate can live together in peace? Yeah, that's what you call milk chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't blink. Yeah. <laughs> Thought I'd get him with that one. Yeah. Uh, last question. Johnny Depp has been in touch? Not yet. Not yet. Not yet I'm but waiting for his call. It's going to happen. Holding my phone. Yeah, <laughs> keep that phone ready. He's going to call anytime. Yeah. All right, but thank you so much for inviting us into this great space for Most anyone welcome. out there. It's called Mr. Bucklet Chocolate Terry. Uh, you come here, you experience chocolate, you eat your own chocolate. Okay, that sounds wrong. You eat chocolate that you make. That sounds better. <laughs>